Hi everyone, today we're going to be discussing behavioral interview strategies and tips. All right, so first we're going to focus on before the interview and how to do a bit of your preparation. So beginning with your own materials, it's essential that you know your resume both inside and out, right? First, you want to make sure that your resume itself reflects your most accurate and up-to-date experiences and involvements, because anything that's listed on the resume is fair game to be discussed in the actual interview itself, right? I know it might sound a little bit cliche, right? But it's important to think of your background as a sort of story. At the end of the day, participating in an interview is kind of like a bit of storytelling, right? You're essentially giving that hiring manager a better understanding of your background and experiences by answering these questions, okay? And I, again, you know, we say it all the time, but practice, 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 okay? And when I say practice, I mean you know, facilitating what it's actually going to be like in that interview scenario. So if it's a phone interview, sitting down with your phone or, you know, having your headphones in, if it's going to be a video interview, sitting in front of the computer and rehearsing, right? Um, And when I also say practice, I say, you, you know, more than just, you know, writing the answers out in front of you or typing them on the computer or rehearsing it in your head, right? Because what you're actually going to be doing in that interview scenario is speaking the answers out loud. So make sure that in your rehearsing process, you are actually rehearsing the answers to these questions out loud, okay? So aside from your own materials, it's also important that you have an understanding of the company, the industry, and the position itself, okay? So there's a couple ways to do a little bit of that research. Best place to start is with the company's website, right? On that page, they're going to have a lot of information. You know, they've got their About Us page. Uh, Recent News is also a really good place to go. Um, You know, Meet the Team. Sometimes on their Careers page, they've got a little bit of information about what it's like working at the company. Um, you know, you want to do a little bit of that preparation so you can answer the question of why it is that you're actually interested in working there, okay? Aside from that, it's also important to know what's going on within the industry broadly, right? Utilizing, you know, resources like LinkedIn to do a little bit of research there. Glassdoor is also a really excellent resource for interview assistance. You know, if you're not familiar with that platform, they do have previous questions that candidates were asked. So generally speaking, it is a really good resource to familiarize yourself with the different types of questions that applicants were asked. Um, And also, right, you want to focus on on that job description because taking into consideration that list of you know responsibilities and qualifications is important because a lot of times you can glean some of the inf- uh, some of the questions that they may ask you based on the information that's written in that job description right so say for example you know in that job description it says oh you're going to be working on a team of people chances are they're probably going to ask you a question about a time when you've worked with other people or perhaps experienced a group conflict, right? So, you know, utilizing all of these resources that you have available to you is going to help you, you know, be that much more prepared when you participate in the actual interview itself. So next, thinking about some of the more logistical information and preparation for before the interview. First, it's important to have an appropriate outfit picked out beforehand, right? So not, you know, scrambling on the morning of when it comes to the interview, but, you know, making sure that it's perhaps laid out the night before so that you have everything that you were looking for, that you make sure that it's ironed and neat looking, that it's not wrinkled, that the clothes are not, you know, in the laundry or anything like that. Um, The other thing when it comes to your outfit, right, is it's always a good idea to be, you know, too formal or erring on the side of caution as opposed to being informal, right? Even if the company has a sort of casual environment when it comes to dress, always, you know, putting your best foot forward, even when it comes to something like an outfit, is is a great idea, right? Because, you know, whether we like it or not, you know, you one of your the very first impressions that you're going to make on a person is with your physical appearance, right? So coming off, you know, uh, formal and dressed appropriately is is just as important as coming off, you know, prepared within the interview itself. Okay. 
So the other thing that you're going to want to do is print out many copies of your resume, right? When I say many copy, copies, I mean more than enough so that every single person who's interviewing you can get a physical copy of that resume, right? I also say, you know, bringing some kind of folder or padfolio or notebook with you, right? So keep all of this information together in one place, right? You never know, they might have handouts to give you, you know, it's also a good idea to have some kind of scrap or loose leaf paper so that you can write out answers to um, write out answers to the questions, you know, that you ask the interviewer, right? If they give you some general information about the company, it's important to, you know, sort of write down some of that information to show that you're paying attention to them, right? Um, but, you know, again, all of these things that you sort of can bring with you to the interview on the day of so that, you know, it again comes across as you've, you know, taken the time to do that preparation. So again, logistically speaking, it's important that you make sure you know the directions to the interview location itself, right? Uh, perhaps making a practice run if necessary. And you want to make sure that you prepare to arrive at least five to 10 minutes early on the actual day of, okay? Another thing I always say is if you're going to be, you know, interviewing in the city or something like that, right? Make sure that you check to see if the subway is running appropriately because you never know what the construction is going to look like on the MTA. Um, so taking all of those things into consideration, right? At the end of the day, doing all of this is going to help ease some of your nerves because, right, inevitably, you know, we're going to be a little bit nervous for something like an interview, you know, it just kind of comes with the territory. So doing all of these things beforehand are going to help allay some of those nervous feelings, okay? And uh, one other note is that you can ask what the format of the interview will be, right? So what I mean, you know, like uh, asking how many people are going to be interviewed, you know, is it going to be a group interview or is it going to be one on one, right? So asking that information ahead of time so that you know how many resume copies to print, right? And so that you know for yourself, right, what the format will look like so you can prepare for that, okay? All right, so generally speaking, some interview guidelines. First, you want to keep it flowing like a normal conversation, really as much as possible. So reducing the amount of filler words that you use, things like like, um, et cetera, really just as much as possible. Because at the end of the day, an interview is kind of like having a conversation. And anytime you insert those sort of filler words in there, it gets a little bit jumbled and you might sound a little bit robotic, which is what we want to avoid in these situations. Additionally, you want to highlight the positive and take any opportunity you can to turn the negative into a positive, okay? So what I mean by that is, say for example, you're asked the question, what is your greatest weakness? This is a really great opportunity to, one, admit that you have a weakness because everybody has weaknesses, and then two, show them how you are taking uh, steps to kind of, you know, alleviate that weakness and turn that into a strength of yours, right? So even though it might be a negative focused question, showing how you are doing things to then take that negative and turn it into a positive, right? By working on it and developing that skill at hand, okay? You also want to make sure that you answer the question at hand. Sometimes it can it can it isn't necessarily clear exactly what the interviewer is asking you. It's more than okay to ask them the follow up. You know, oh, could you repeat that question again? Or oh, you know, I didn't quite get that or understand that. Would you be able to repeat that again for me? Right. Especially if you are doing interview over the phone or over Skype, for example, and the words do get a bit jumbled up sometimes, and that's okay. It's also important and more than okay to take a little bit of time to think of your answers before answering the question, right? Because the last thing that you want to do is end up going off on a tangent and not actually answer the central point of the question, all right? Again, another thing that's important is to elaborate and always back each one of your answers up with an example from your experiences, okay? And that doesn't matter doesn't necessarily matter where it comes from on the resume, whether it's from your coursework, from, you know, your volunteer work, from your past job experiences, your on-campus involvement, right? As long as you're able to supplement each one of your stories with an example from your past experiences, right? That's what's important. 
Okay, so here we have some common entry-level interview questions for college students. We've divided them into two categories, one being the academic-centered questions, so questions about your educational experience, your coursework, some of the involvements that you've had on campus, and then we have the personality and trait-based questions. So just take a minute to read through some of these because these are very common entry-level questions that we find many of our students are asked on an, in an interview, right? It really isn't anything too difficult Right? The, the interviewers just want to get a better understanding of you as a student and also you as a person, right? That's why they mix in sort of some of those academic questions as well as those personality and trait-based questions because, right, you are a full-time student above all else. So academics and education really should be at the forefront of your, you know, mind. Um, as well as thinking more so about how you would act in certain situations as an employee. All right, so next we're going to discuss preparing for two of the basic interview questions, right? The first being one that you can almost always expect the interviewer to start off with is tell me a little bit more about yourself, right? Essentially what this means is walk me through your resume or take me through sort of the background of your experiences, right? Your education, your coursework, some of the previous jobs and internships that you've held, how you're involved on campus, what all of that kind of looks like, okay? So it's important to keep this answer to around two minutes in length, right? You really don't want to go on and ramble about every little detail on the resume. It's not important. You kind of just want to give a few of the highlights, all right? So another way that we sort of phrase this is your elevator pitch, right? So again, it describes your education experience, whatever that kind of looks like. And what I always recommend to students as well is ending the answer to this question with how these things have led you to the company and in internship or job at hand, right? Because, you know, there's obviously a reason why you're interested in this specific company based on your previous experiences, right? Based on your coursework, wherever it kind of stems from. It's important to bring that up and discuss it in this interview question as well, all right? It's also more than okay to start with a personal example, but you always want to make sure that you end with why it is you want to work at that organization, okay? Essentially, the reason why they ask this question is to get a better idea of what, you know, your experience and your background looks like and to hear it verbally from you, right? Because they can only garner so much information from what's just written on the resume. They want to hear you craft it, whatever kind of story it is that you've kind of crafted for yourself, right, based on your resume, right? And, you know, another helpful hint is that since this is a question that you can almost always anticipate at the beginning of any interview, you can really prepare this answer ahead of time, right? So think about, you know, and practice out loud what your answer would be to this question, right? Because at the end of the day, your experience is your experience, and that's not something that you can necessarily change interview to interview, right? The one thing that you will want to change around each time is ending with why it is that you want to work work at this specific organization in this specific position. But it's still more than okay to kind of craft this answer ahead of time, since you will likely be anticipating this question at the beginning of the interview. All right, so the second basic interview question that you can almost always anticipate is the why are you interested in working at this company, right? This question really assesses whether a candidate has taken the time to do their research on a specific company, right? It's another one of those type of filtering questions in the sense that, right, it's very easy for a hiring manager to tell when a candidate has not done their research, right? Because they're really not going to be able to speak to any kind of specifics about the company itself, okay? So in order to answer this question, you really do need to do some of that preparation ahead of time. There are a lot of different resources out there that you can go to to do some of this research into the company specifically, right? The company's website is really by far one of the best places that you can go. Social media outlets are also a really good platform just to get more, you know, recent updates on the company itself. 
LinkedIn is a really great resource because every company pretty much has a page on LinkedIn where you can access recent news, see some of the individuals that work at the company, right? Glassdoor is also a really great way to get a little bit of information, inside information about a company specifically, right? Networking connections, career fairs, right? Some of these on-campus opportunities that we have available as well. It's always a really great way to kind of learn a little bit more about the company in order to help craft your answer to this question of why it is that you're interested in working here, right? At the end of the day, by displaying this knowledge, you're essentially showing the interviewer that you're in touch with what's going on with the company, right? And that's really what they're getting at by asking this question, right? Assessing, has this candidate taken the time to do their research? And are they genuinely interested in what it is that we're offering them, right? And that they're not just kind of another candidate who's, you know, basically interviewing for the position because the company is hiring, right? All right, so moving on to the skill and attribute questions. One example of this is, what are your greatest strengths? You know, another one of these would be, what are some of your top few skills that you could bring to this position, right? Any of those things that kind of assess your skills that you've developed and how those are going to be applicable to the job at hand. So it's a good idea to always try and mix in personal qualities with those on the job skills, right? So things like organization, communication, time management, leadership, right? All of these things that are kind of transferable and things that you've probably garnered from any type of experience that you've been involved in, whether it's a formal work experience, on-campus involvement, uh, volunteer work, even just from your education and coursework, right? And what's another important thing that you want to make sure that you do is back each one of these questions up with an example from your prior experiences, right? So for example, we have I have strong interpersonal communication skills. As a behavioral counselor, I was responsible for seeing up to 20 students with behavioral problems a day at the middle school. Participating in daily one-on-one -on -one sessions with these students allowed me to develop strong listening skills and the ability to identify underlying problems that needed to be addressed. These skills will benefit me when I am doing X, Y, and Z as iterated in that job description, right? It's always a good idea as well to connect how the skills that you've developed are going to be relevant to the position at hand, right? And again, it's equally as important to make sure that we back each one of these up with an example from your prior experience. Another example of a question you may encounter are the filtering questions. An example of this is, what is your greatest weakness? You know, another example might be, tell me about a time that you made a mistake right? So it's important that in answering these questions, you want to ensure that you pick something that isn't a necessary component of the current job at hand, right? Of course, we all have weaknesses. We've all made mistakes in our past. So of course, you know, you do want to have some kind of example to back this up, but you do want to make sure that it's not an essential skill or component of the job that you are currently interviewing for, right? And, you know, another great thing to kind of do within these type, within answering these types of questions is show that you're working on this weakness by providing an example or show, you know, that you've made a mistake, but that you've been able to learn from that experience, right? To then show, right, how you're going to, you know, capture those things in your future behavior, right? So, for example, being organized wasn't always my strongest point, but I implemented a time management system that has allowed me to hone my organization skills. I have learned to budget my time effectively by prioritizing tasks based on the deadline and demands of the assignment. Through this method, I have been able to complete my assignments before the deadline and have ample time to make revisions and finishing touches, right? So in this sample answer, they, you know, first admit that they have a weakness, show what it is that they've been doing to, you know, address this weakness, and then they're providing a little bit of, you know, the sort of quote-unquote results aspect, right? So showing that they've, you know, because they've impl implemented this organization system, they now have ample time to make those revisions and finishing touches, right? So again, backing each one of these um, answers up with an example from their past experience. All right, so next we're gonna talk about behavioral questions. These questions are typically asked regarding previous behaviors on the job in order to help you know, the interviewers predict what the future behaviors and actions of the interviewee will be when they are on their new 
role, right? So, for example, you can anticipate various situations that the interviewers may inquire about based on the job and internship description at hand, right? So, for example, if in that bullet-pointed list of responsibilities and qualifications, they have a um, section that indicates that you're going to be working as part of a team, right? chances are that in the interview, they're going to ask you a question about your experiences working with other people, right? Teamwork, dealing with, you know, intergroup conflict, right? Leading a team of people, perhaps, right? So it's important to make sure that you really have a good understanding of that job description, you know, in order to help kind of predict a little bit of the behavioral questions that they may ask, right? So generally speaking, these are some of the um, behavioral components that they may inquire about, things like leadership, teamwork, organizations, right? And then more specific instances related to the organization or industry, right? And of course, these will look a little bit different depending on position to position. So next, let's take a look at some strategies to help answer these questions. All right, so as I discussed previously, behavioral interview questions are used to determine how you acted in a specific situation to then help predict what types of actions you will take in future situations when on the current job at hand, all right? So here we have some sample behavioral interview questions that are very commonly asked in interviews, all right? Tell me about a time you had to work with someone whose personality was very different from yours. How do you stay organized and manage your time effectively? Tell me about a time you made a mistake. How did you handle this? Share an example of a time you acted as a leader and managed a group of people. Describe a situation where you felt outside of your comfort zone and how you adapted to the demands of the work. All of these are very, very common, very general kind of in behavioral interview questions. And the most important thing when it comes to the behavioral interview questions, again, is that you back each one of them up with an example. And it doesn't necessarily matter where that example comes from, whether it's your coursework, your past job experiences, your on-campus involvements, right? Just that you are able to kind of illustrate how it is that you possess this skill or how it is that you, you know, rose to the occasion with a specific example example from your past. All right, so thinking a little bit more specifically about how to actually go about answering these types of behavioral interview questions. This is a very helpful format to help sort of craft your responses and then give yourself a bit of a guideline on how to frame them and then answer them when it comes to the actual interview, right? So here we have our sample question. Give me an example of a time you had to deal with conflict, right? So we want to first pick a strong example from our previous experiences and follow the sore format, right? So this is that framework that I mentioned that helps kind of set up how we want to give the answer to this question. So first, you want to present the situation. I had a teammate in a group project who had a different working style than me, which caused an intergroup conflict. Next, you want to discuss what the obstacle in this situation was. She did things at the last minute and neglected to communicate with our group, where I like to complete things early. We turned in an assignment late because she had not finished her part in time for me to finish mine. Next, you want to describe the action that you took in that situation to help address this obstacle. I scheduled a one-on-one -on -one meeting with this teammate, had a discussion with her about her lack of participation, and we decided to make timelines together, set specific goals for each of our group meets, and adhere to them. And finally, you want to end this answer by describing what actually resulted from these actions, whether it was learning something or whether it was producing a physical result. So. With this new timeline, we were able to compromise. I realized I didn't have to do things so early, and my teammate adhered to an earlier deadline. Our next project was turned in on time, and we received an A on the assignment. All right? So using the SOAR format, you can apply this to any kind of behavioral question that you're asked, and it is really important that you follow each of these steps so as not to leave out any details in answering the, the question at hand. All right, so at the end of the interview, right, they are going to likely ask you the question, what kind of questions do you have for us? Or do you have any questions prepared for us, the interviewers, right? And the absolute worst thing that you can say in this situation is, no, I don't have any questions, all right? Because that indicates to the hiring managers, the interviewers, that you're, one, unprepared, and two, not really interested in what it is that they have to say, okay? And you want to do a little bit of research ahead of time to brainstorm 
three to five questions to ask the interviewers based on research, recent news, right? Um, information that's written on their company's website within the job description, okay? Or based on what comes up in the interview, right? So say if they're discussing a certain aspect of the internship that you want more information about, right? It's a good idea to ask them a question specific to what it is that they discussed earlier because it shows that you were paying attention to what it is that they were saying, all right? The one caveat to this is that you really just wanna make sure that you don't ask something that you should already know the answer to based on the job description itself or the company's website, all right? So here are some examples of good questions to ask a hiring manager, just generally speaking, right? These aren't necessarily specific questions, but these are just more general questions that are more than appropriate to ask a hiring manager in an interview situation. How would you describe the company's culture? What opportunities for professional development exist? How has the company changed during the time you've been here? In your words, what skills are necessary for success in this role? All right. Another thing I would also suggest when um, asking and receiving answers to these questions is having some type of notebook or, you know, loose leaf paper in front of you. One, so that you can have the questions written down in front of you so you don't forget them. And two, so that you can take notes to the responses that the interviewers give you, right? One, to show that you're interested in what it is that they have to say. And two, so that you have these uh, answers to help craft your thank you emails that you'll be writing later. All right, so as I just mentioned previously, it's very, very important to follow up with the interviewers after your interview, right? So what you wanna make sure that you do is get business cards or contact information from every single person that interviews you, right? If they don't necessarily have a business card on hand, you can just ask them for their email and write it down on a piece of paper so that you have it, okay? Because it's very, very important that you write a thank you letter or email within 24 hours following the interview, all right? In that thank you email, you also want to make sure that you inquire about the next steps in the process so that you know for your own personal means, right, what the timeline looks like so that you know, okay, if I don't hear back in X number of days, then it's okay for me to send another follow-up email and inquire about what the next steps looks like. Okay, so in this thank you email, you want to include a little bit of a summary, summative information about, you know, who you are and what your interests are within the job and the company, right? But you also want to pepper in a little bit of information about what came up in your interview, right? So say, for example, if you discussed, you know, your time as a college athlete, right, or your involvement in a specific club that they were also involved in during their time at the college, right? It's important to pepper in that information so that it sticks out in the reader's mind, right? So that that hiring manager, when they're reading that email, they say, oh, okay, great. I remember who this candidate is because at the end of the day, they're probably reading a lot of emails. They're probably um, receiving a lot of, you know, applications from different candidates. And you really want to do whatever you can to make sure that you stick out in their mind as an ideal fit. Okay. And, you know, above all else, it's really just so, so important that you send some type of follow-up and thank you email because at the end of the day, it can make the difference between, you know, getting the internship and not getting the internship or getting the job and not getting the job. Because, right, if there are two equally qualified candidates, it may come down to who, you know, acted professionally and sent that thank you email and who did not. Okay, so above all else, just make sure that you get that contact information and send that thank you and follow up email. All right, everyone, that just about sums things up. I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to listen today, and I hope that this was helpful. All right, have a good day.